Okay, so we're about to be trying one of these on my cell phone, and we're about to be trying one of these for the very first time at a place not at my apartment, which by which I mean a place I work at. I'm on my lunch break, I've got about 20 minutes left, and I just found out that I'm recording one of these, and someone sends me a text message, it apparently cancels the recording. So what I consider a decent take is now gone, and my lunch break is now shorter than it should be, but I'll get to the point, the Netflix of books. Let me start out by saying two misconceptions. A, the Netflix of books will not be the death of the book industry. The book industry has for, I would say, centuries been driven by people who don't want to pay for books, whether it be through libraries, used bookstores, which I guess by which I mean they pay little for books, um, paperback swaps, trading books with friends, getting books from relatives, uh, just, you know, like just reading books and the bookstore, whatever, downloading books illegally, stealing books, there's lots of ways people have spent a lot of time not paying for books. I would go as far as to say in the 20th century, most big book readers probably paid for less than half. And this is a guess, but I would say that most big book readers paid for less than half of the books that they read. And I know that anecdotally, most of my friends who most heavily identify as readers tend to not buy most of the books they read. I know of maybe two or three friends who actually buy most of the books they read. And yet the book industry continues to stay, I wouldn't say strong, but not, you know, as more abundant as a lot of people seem to claim. So, I do not think the Netflix the book model, in which people pay, by the way, just in case you don't know, people pay a certain fee and then they get to read a technically unlimited amount of books, um, usually through a device. These are usually ebooks we're referring to, but I'm sure physical versions could exist as well. But I do not think the Netflix the books model will destroy the book industry. Secondly, and this is very important considering where I'm standing, I do not think the Netflix the books model is proven to be viable by libraries. Libraries and the Netflix of books are a different thing. A, we're a nonprofit entity, usually designed around something like a curation model. Here, we're very much so designed around a curation model. We work very hard to get very high value research materials and reference materials and make available to students and professors. Other libraries are usually driven by a notion of finding good books for people, keeping their stuff up to date not allowing crap to come through. Um, I meant sure there's one person's crap and another person's treasure. Um, but we're driven by a completely different sort of instinct than someone who's just trying to completely fill coffers to get butts in the seat. And by butts in the seat, I mean people willing to pay $9.99 a month for a subscription fee. So I don't think libraries are the Netflix of books. Um, I don't think anything much like um, that kind of entity would really, really compare to a library per se, besides something like Project Gutenberg, whose purpose is getting information available and in the best possible quality to the most people. But I guess you could argue about that all day long. But my one thing is I definitely don't think the Netflix books will destroy the book industry. I think the book industry has problems. I'm actually kind of terrified of advertisement in books. I think it may be the next thing that gets tried out, especially with digital books. Um, and I think what, what's referred to as native advertisement may be coming to books really damn soon. You know, product, product placement just stuck in a chapter for so much money. But that's, you know, it may be the future. Commercialization's everywhere. At any rate, I guess I'll end here. I'll actually eat lunch and get back inside. And... What do you think?